Hello and welcome to an introduction to quantum physics. I am Carl Juvella. I am a uni student at the UTA, uh, University of Technology, Sydney, and I will be introducing you to the very, very basics of quantum physics. Yay! Okay, so we have to begin with the time dependent Schrodinger equation because everything starts from there. Everything. Everything ever. Everything, just everything. Okay, maybe not everything, but most things in quantum. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we have. <coughs> so here we have a uh, time-dependent Schrödinger equation. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have the time evolution of the energy of a particle system, and uh, this. So here we can see the description of this time dependence here, and this uh, vector r gives its uh, position vector. On the right hand side we have the Hamiltonian. Uh, that is an operator, and it's operating on the wave function here. Uh, inside the Hamiltonian we will see that we have uh, these terms here. So this is h bar, which is h on 2 pi, yes, h on 2 pi, which is a, a Planck's constant on 2 pi, and this is the mass of a particle in uh, the system that we are measuring or looking at. Uh, a funny thing about this operator is it includes another operator, the Laplacian, which is the sum of all the second differential, second differentials. So this is in three dimension. Uh, that's uh, horrible. There we go. Okay. And plus a potential. Yeah. Okay. So what we are going to do in this video is we're going to derive the time independent Schrodinger equation. So to do so, we have to assume that we have a time independent potential and we'll be working in the x dimension one dimension only for this example to make it easy yes okay so I'm going to substitute this in after I do a separation of variables so we're going to assume true that we can separate out these variables like so okay. Yes. So now we can substitute our potential in with our separated variables. So the left hand side will look like this. Uh, I keep making mistakes. And we have this going to an ordinary differential instead of a partial because now it's being applied to a function of only one variable. On the right hand side, I will write out the Hamiltonian explicitly. And since the Laplacian is only in one dimension, we only apply one dimension. Yes, this is first, uh, first differential, first term in the Laplacian. Plus our potential applied to the wave function. Ah, oh, look at that, it's magic, it's magic. Okay, now to find a solution to this we have to put all of one, uh, variables, variables of one type to one side and of course do the opposite with the other. I mean as in bring it to the opposite side. So, we'll divide everything by these two variables. So the left hand side will look like this and the right hand side might look something like this eh uh, uh, 
I should have put this on the left. It doesn't matter. I mean, on the left of this. Plus our potential. Alright. So this can only be true if this is all equal to some constant, which I'll call E. Magic. Okay. Now, I will clear this and I'll move this up to the top. Okay. Do, do. Oh, look at that. Now we continue from here. Okay. Now I will look at the left hand side first with respect to this constant. So we have. Oh, and I'll also move this up to the other side to make it nice and pretty. Hmm. Everyone likes beautiful looking maths. Yes, yes. Okay, here we go. Now, this can only be true uh, for one function, which is the exponential. There's only one function. Uh, to make this more obvious, I'll put this down on this side. Uh, oh, there's only one function that is differentiated and will return the same function with uh, a constant out the front. So it is very likely that our function here will equal something like this. So going along this train of thought, if there we go. Uh, we'll have this and now we substitute that into here and we get um, magic happening oh it's magical okay so the functions exponential functions will cancel each other out and we're left with this and we want to find what lambda equals so we can substitute into here and get a uh, uh, general equation so lambda equals uh, I want to keep this i on top I don't want to bring it down the bottom so we'll times both sides by negative i so negative i e on h bar magical so our general solution the time for the time dependent part of the Schrodinger equation is e to the power of i e t on h bar okay this can be simplified further well just for looks where we can remember from Einstein's relation on the energy in a photon quantized energy is e equals hf or e equals h bar omega remembering that h bar equals h on 2 pi and omega equals 2 pi f alright so that would mean that uh, general solution here equals e to the minus i omega t magic oh, I didn't make this obvious enough so that leads to omega equals e on h bar alright that's that now we'll look at the right hand side of the equation so we have oh and again I'll move this function up to the other side so we have h bar, that's a negative there h bar d squared psi x magic x plus something else with a thing here equals uh, an E whatever that could possibly stand for this oh look huh? we have found our time independent Schrodinger equation that is it that is it right here and we can call it the TICE for short okay now uh, to make it easier to solve this we're gonna move some things around so I'm going to say the left hand side oh actually I'll make a quick note here 
I will tell you what this E stands for. This is the total energy of the system without time dependence. And on the hand side we have the kinetic energy and the potential. Okay, now rearranging this equation we all get something amazing. Oh, I have introduced something. Why would I have done this? So we can see again, assuming uh, the exponential thing, but I have to say, what is this k here? Well, k equals uh, to m on h bar e minus vx. It's all square rooted. That's from very very simple rearrangement of this equation. Now, anyway, so we assume that it's very likely our general solution will look something like this like this and we'll differentiate that twice so we can find what this will equal so the second differential is this and it doesn't matter which character I use here, I could use a pi even, but that might confuse some people. So we'll substitute that in. So substituting in, we get on the left hand side uh, this, and on the right hand side we have this. Um, I missed something. Okay, again exponentials disappear, and we're left with this and then we know that the giant omega equals plus minus i k when we square root both sides alrighty so we can substitute that into here and we find our general solution and where do what is this I'm adding things well these constants here are arbitrary and possibly uh, possibly complex and they are there to satisfy the linear superposition uh, principle so this here on this first term is a solution this term is also a solution to our equation up here but also a linear combination of the two is, is also a solution Alrighty, so we have now, I can put this together just for fun. Uh, why am I writing R? So we have the time independent solution times by the time dependence. There you go. And you may have noticed I did not put a constant here that uh, in for this solution. Uh, that would have been absorbed by these constants, so that's why I did not put it in. Alrighty, there you go. Now we have uh, a time-independent formula, a uh, Schrodinger equation, and general solution. This will be used in the next few videos. Hope you enjoyed it.